Welcome back to the Y Factor. If you haven't recognized my voice already, my name is Amatla and inshallah I'll be taking the religious corner for this week. Um, hopefully we'll try and and tie in the main segment with the religious corner. So today I chose to talk about a story which uh, hopefully highlights the significance and impact that women can have in society through their dedication, their patience, and most of all, their perseverance. Now this story is a story of a woman uh, by the name of Um Shuraik, which was from the tribe of Atafan. So she was she wasn't from Kh- Quraysh herself, but her husband was. Uh, she was from Atafan, and they both lived in Mecca together. This lady embraced Islam and she took on the responsibility of doing dawah and calling people to God's way as we all do. Like we all have that responsibility but she really did it from her heart. So what she used to do was that she used to secretly meet with the women of Quraysh throughout the day, you know, at Duhur, Asr, Maghrib. And she used to tell them about the beauty of Islam. And they slowly, slowly began to embrace Islam in, you know, vast numbers as Muslims are embracing Islam in vast numbers today in this day and age. So she used to tell them about the beauty of Islam and a lot of these women were becoming Muslims at the hands of Um Shuraik. So as always, the men of Quraysh found out and were extremely infuriated. So they bought her and they swore that if the tribe of Ghatafan were not allies of Quraysh, then surely they would have killed her. So Ghatafan and uh, Quraysh were good allies um, and if it wasn't for that, then they would have killed her. But instead they chose to torture her. So how did they torture her? They made her ride on the camel without putting a saddle. So if you can imagine, that would be extremely painful if you're sitting on a camel and it has no saddle. Um, and it's said to be very exhausting as well. Um, but that's what they wanted. They t- wanted to torture her. They also put her on the camel's back and made her travel in the heat with them. So they would tie her and leave her out in the sun in the scorching heat of Saudi Arabia, which we know can get up to 50 degrees and that would just be normal. So they left her in the heat um, for three days. The first day, no food, no drink in the heat. Second day, same thing. And then the third day, if you can imagine, she was dying. She was almost about to die. Um, she had no food in her system, she had no water, and she had heat exhaustion. So they continued on their travels and they decided to have a rest. So they came down from the camels and they left her out in the sun with her hands tied. Then an amazing thing happened to Um Shireik, which she herself was very astonished and overwhelmed by. So as she was in this horrible state, she felt very hot, obviously. She was uh, very thirsty, she was very hungry. But she felt there was a bucket of water containing cool water, more like like this beautiful honey she described as, touching her lips. So she opened her mouth and she drank from it. And then the bucket was raised, like it was taken away from her. Then the bucket came back to her and she opened her mouth and she drank from the water. And she drank again. And the bucket was raised and so on. So three times there was a bucket that came to her lips and she drank from it and then it was pulled away from her. And subhanAllah, when you think about it, Allah brought down this water to her, but he gave it to her in bits because she had nothing in her system. And if she sculled it down, then she would be harmed. Her body would be harmed. So there's a lot of wisdom that goes behind it. Um, So this bucket was raised and lowered three times until her thirst was quenched. And then the bucket laid before her. So she drank from it and then it was in front of her and it didn't come near her mouth again. So what she did with her tied hands, she drew the, the bucket towards her and she poured the water over her overheated body um, just to cool her body down and to refresh her. So after a while, the disbelievers woke up. They found that her health was restored and she like she looked refreshed and there was traces of water around her and they were like, okay, what happened? What did we miss? Um, so obviously then they began to accuse her of untying her hands and going and stealing from their water and drinking from it. So she said, look, my hands are tired. How could I have untied myself and gone and drank from your water if my hands are tired? Like, it doesn't make sense. But obviously they accused her and they said that you're a liar. Um, And they said to her, then who gave you this water? If you didn't go and take it, who gave you this water and how did you drink it? Um, And she told them, a bucket of water came down to me from the sky. So I drank it. And they didn't believe her. And you can imagine why. Imagine someone tells you, yeah, like you've tried to starve them and you haven't given them water and you've put them in the heat and then suddenly this bucket just comes down and they're drinking from it. Um, it's pretty hard to believe. Um, so they told her, I don't believe you, but we're going to go and see our water vessels and see if they're intact. So she said, go, go see if, they've, if, if anyone's opened them. So they went and they found their water vessels intact 
untouched and they said wallahi your religion is better than our religion nashhadu anna la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah and they all embraced islam if you see the power of this woman how just one woman her perseverance her patience and her faith in allah made a group of grown men tribal men or embrace islam so what can we take from this um you know you're going to come across obstacles um in an attempt to stand up for islam and to spread our deen just as um shuraik did but the main thing is that you remain steadfast as um shuraik did and allah and none but allah will make you victorious as happened in the case of um shuraik you know there's a there's a hadith that says there will come a day where it will be so hard to hold on to your religion and it will be so easy just to fall into the temptation that Allah has promised one person that holds their deen holds on to their deen to have the reward of 50 companions of the prophet 50 companions of the prophet the reward of their lives and the things they sacrificed for and the battles they went to all that just to hold on to your deen because there will come a time where it's going to be so harsh for us um and you know we're slowly entering into that stage you know a lot of us are you know sometimes we slip but it's the reward behind it is so great and we need to learn from um shuraik people like um shuraik who held on to their deen and even though they were tortured they she she was steadfast and because of that allah made her victorious and had such a big impact on the community and on the society So I guess I'll leave it at that and inshallah you benefited from this story and ask Allah to forgive us all. Jazakallah khair. The Y factor.